Hello, kids. We're here today in another uh, Bible verse, and I'm looking forward to teaching you. Today's catechism is, what else does Christ's death redeem? The answer is, Christ's death is the beginning of the redemption and the renewal of everything every part of the fallen creation as he powerfully directs all things for his own glory and creation's good. Now, before I move the slide over, I want you to think of maybe the biggest thing in the world that you can think of. I know I can't get your answers, but just be thinking of that. Because I'm going to see if I can top that with this picture. Okay, hopefully you're ready. So, yes, this is a, the Grand Canyon, probably one of the most famous national parks in the United States. And it is known for being so huge, so glorious, so big, that words really can't describe it. Has anybody been there? I know I was there three years ago, and when I was driving up, right before we hit the canyon, you kind of build up this excitement, and then this is what you see, and it is truly as grand as they say it is. So let's talk about that a little bit. What makes the Grand Canyon so spectacular in your mind? I want you to think of some adjectives or maybe descriptive words and be saying them if you're in a house with your parents and you're watching this, maybe talk with them, or if you have other brothers and sisters, talk with them. Here are some of the words I came up with. There's a vastness to the Grand Canyon. It just seems like it just goes on and on forever. Another word to me is just awesome. It's gigantic. It's very, very immense. That means big, colorful. All the colorful, the colors of the Grand Canyon are just mind boggling. And depending on what time of day you are there, it changes. It's also very majestic. And for some of us, just saying really, really big, I think it's just fine too. So let's continue discovering why we why are we even talking about the Grand Canyon? Oh, I forgot about this part. Another neat thing you can do is you can go and hike down the Grand Canyon, you can get another view. And even though your scope is a little bit narrower, you start to see things that you would normally not see as you go deeper into the canyon. And that's where I want to switch gears to what is the gospel? As it is with the gospel, the gospel, as you begin to read it, it's the New Testament in the Bible. As you begin to read it, you begin to discover more and more and more and go deeper and deeper down, like going down in the canyon, more and more about who God is and who Jesus is. And this is just some of the things that the Bible, the gospel gives us. First off, salvation of sinners. God, through his son, Jesus Christ, has graciously acted to save us from our sinful nature. We know that. We've been talking about it so much over the past few weeks. We are redeemed from our sin. And next, we are made into new creation. We are a new creation made by God after we ask Jesus to come into our lives. And then we are adopted into the family of God forever. So those are just a few of the many nuggets of truth that you can find as you explore the gospel and go deeper and deeper into it. Continuing on with this idea of going deeper and finding out what's in the Bible, let's look at another um, formation of nature, which is the iceberg. If you were in a little boat right along here, and you go, uh-oh, there's, there's an iceberg, and you just see this part. This is what you see. But underneath, look how deep and how big 
the iceberg is in reality. Just like with the Bible, kids, and with discovering the gospel and discovering who Jesus Christ is, you can discover the depth of who he is by reading his word. The gospel message, there's always something more to discover, like I've already said. The gospel message is wider and deeper than the Grand Canyon. And there is always more below the surface to discover like the iceberg. But only God knows the depth of this message. So he will always continually be showing you something new, something bigger, something grander. What is the heart of the gospel? Number one, of course, it's saving sinners. That's the number one requirement. Secondly, think of the gospel like a fountainhead or the beginning of a river. And a lot of little river, a lot of rivers start out small with lots of waterfalls along the way. And then it begins to get bigger and bigger and bigger and flow mightier and mightier and mightier, mightier like the Mississippi. And this flowing of a mighty river is what heals man and all creation. which is what I think is great about spring, because spring is the new beginning of life. Flowers are popping up, birds are chirping, having their babies, animals are having their babies, and everything's new and fresh. That's what God does for you through his son, Jesus. Let's talk about that a little bit more. These are things that we've already gone over over the past couple weeks. So this is kind of a reminder. Like last week, we talked more about the blood of Christ. Through Christ's blood, shed blood on the cross, creation can be freed of its bondage. So all of creation, kids, the mountains, the trees, the air, everything is being used. Due to man's fall, which we know in the very beginning with Adam and Eve, when all this started, Jesus smashes the results of the, the fall of man at the very beginning of creation. All creation is renewed, and all who accept his gift are renewed all also. So back to the beginning of our question, what else does Christ's death redeem? Christ's death is the beginning of the redemption, the renewal of every part of fallen creation. So it's the renewal of everything, which I think is just so amazing, so wonderful. I just get so excited about it. And as he powerfully directs all things for his own glory, and God and creation's good. So everything that God is doing is really for his glory. And as he renews our life, we go out and spread that joy to others. And it's all for God. It's not for us, but it's for God so that he can continue shining his light. Now to help you along the way in the next couple days. Oh, I forgot that. Get that in a minute. Who is our hope? Everybody should be answering God or Jesus. And here's our action step. I know the weather's starting to break, and hopefully your parents will let you go out for walks, or maybe you go with them. And as you are out, I want you to observe God's creation. Try to find 10 things, even if you can't find 10 things, even if you find two or three to help you remember who our creator is and then praise him for that. I was on a walk earlier this week and these flowers were blooming. They're called blood root and they were all in this little cliffy side hillside. And they only grow in that kind of environment. They weren't growing anywhere else. And then I, most of you might know where Wildwood is. It's a, a series of trails that goes around the marsh in the city here. And there's an egret, and it happened to look at me just at the right moment. 
then another day I was on a walk and a little chipmunk came out of its, out of its hole. So just life is abounding. So I'd like you to go on an adventure walk and try to really enjoy God's creation because that's also what is being renewed. Not only are we being renewed through Christ, our Lord, Savior, as we ask for forgiveness of our sin, of our sin so is all creation. So I'm going to end with that. Let me just end with prayer, and then we'll, I'll let you go. Thank you so much. Father, Lord, I just praise you for this opportunity to be able to just share the joy that I have in you, Lord, and the joy that you've given me when I get to go out and experience your creation. And I'm so thankful, Lord, that it's spring, and you are showing yourself every day to me. And I pray that you would do that for the kids as well. In Jesus' precious name, amen.